Hey guys, here we go. This is day three of my dial-in for your marathon or 10K experience, which you're going to be having this weekend on Friday. It's the Dubai Standard Chartered Marathon and the 10K. I have to apologize. There was a slight hiccup yesterday. Monty came on my show, disrupted the whole thing, and apparently I didn't save the video. So I want to have a quick recap of what I spoke about yesterday. I'm going to check some notes because I might have forgotten. No, I haven't really. The main focus of yesterday's video was about nerves. People started to feel anxious. People are nervous for this race. Maybe I'm a little bit unprepared. What I said on that show yesterday is that if you've done your training, and you've got everything in place that I'm speaking about in these videos this week, then you have absolutely no reason to be nervous. You're gonna have a natural level of nerves anyway because that's healthy and it's just the way it goes. We've got this taper syndrome. Here comes the read she missed yesterday. I'm just going over what we spoke about yesterday. Nerves, if you've done the training like you have Arij, you should have absolutely no reason to be nervous. So that was really point number one and the biggest point from yesterday. The second point we spoke about yesterday is what your strategy is for the race. I used a quote from Mike Tyson that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face, which you guys might have heard before, but I actually think it's absolutely true. You're gonna have a plan, we're gonna set out. Some of my athletes, I have them running certain intervals. They might run 2K, walk a little bit, they might run 5K, walk a little bit, and repeat that. But when you're out there on the course, it might not be like that. You might have to adjust a little bit. So make sure you have a strategy in place. Thanks for the question, Owen. Nothing to do with marathon training. I'm not sure if I'm doing the open this year. Let's see how that goes. So you might have a plan in place. Just know what that plan is. Know what your speed is, know maybe what your heart rate is, and where you plan to have the stops, but just always be ready to adjust a little bit. The water station might not be bang on at 3K, or it might not be bang on at 5K. In Dubai, they're about every 5K in the marathon it's a little bit different in the 10k race so just have your plan in place and this was the big thing that i spoke about yesterday to have a plan but if it goes wrong maybe you fall over at the start i hope you don't i really hope you don't fall over at the start but maybe something might happen that might kick your plan off a little bit just be ready to readjust so keep your strategy in mind but make sure you're always ready to readjust so that was the main learnings of yesterday Today, for my athletes, and hopefully for you guys, is again an active rest day. I gave you this on Sunday, on the first day, day five out from the marathon, and I wanna give you this advice again today. I want you to do a video, a, a YouTube video that I've put out on mobility. It's a simple thing, it's about 30 minutes. If you don't have the link for that yet, I sent it to a lot of you on Sunday. If you don't have the link for that yet, just send me a message and I will give you the link for my, it's a very generic 30 minutes of mobility, but on an active rest day, it really helps. Sean Hurls used it a lot when he was preparing for MDS Peru and he found a lot of benefit from it. It's not rocket science, I'm not a mobility specialist, but it's some exercises that you can do. And I'd really, really say you should be doing that today. Today should probably be a rest day. We might have one more run tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. I'll talk about that when it comes. What else can you be doing right now? What time does your race start? This is a question that I've had and it leads on to some nutrition. Know what time your race starts. Based on where your race, when your race starts, know where your race starts. Make sure you know where the start line is. Maybe even take a drive down there today or tomorrow to see where the start line is and where you can park. Maybe you're going in a taxi, maybe you're going to park your car. All of these small things, if you screw them up on the day, you're going to get to the start line and have a little bit of negativity going on. And they're just variables that you can control that you just must, must control. So what time does your race start? Parking, where are you gonna park? Where is the race? That's super important. Also, the next few days, I'm not sure where the pickup, the race pack pickup for the Standard Chartered race is, but you'll have to go somewhere and you'll have to pick up your race pack. In your race pack, you'll get your number, you'll get your timing chip, you'll get some other useless stuff that some sponsors have chucked in there. God bless the sponsors. Get down, get your race pack early and on your terms. There's nothing worse than going to race registration to collect your race pack like the night before a race. The traffic will be mayhem. Just get down there the next few days if it's open or as soon as it opens and get your race pack picked up so you're all ready for the race. One of the biggest questions and 
Sean Hurls shared it with us. He said that he is trying to break four hours for the marathon this year, which is a really respectable and cool time. We were talking yesterday about nutrition and on the first day about nutrition and hydration, and as well, what's your race strategy? What's your nutrition strategy? Hurls says his nutrition strategy is to have a goo gel every 20 to 30 minutes, and then he has 500 mils of water every 5K. A lot of people ask me, should I be taking goo gels with me? My answer to this is just super straightforward. If you've used goo gels before and your stomach can handle them and you're totally comfortable using goo gels, then use goo gels. If your 10K or if your marathon on Friday is the first time you're gonna be using goo gels, I would say stay away from it. Some people just literally can't stomach them. To some people they're very sweet, some people they're very gluggy in the mouth and they just don't work well. Sean used his in Peru, in MDS Peru, and he's super good with goo gels. So that's really my advice there on goo gels. What he does say there is that it's his strategy to have 500 mils of water every 5K. We spoke about that yesterday, that, and I've spoken about it a number of times. Hey Shaky, thanks a lot, hope you're running this weekend. I think we had that conversation yesterday. Best of luck if you are, mate. There's gonna be water stops on the marathon every 5K. So you can get about 500 mils of water in every 5K, and that's Sean's strategy there as well. Another question is, I used to wake up at 6.30 and run take 10K and with, with an empty stomach. And this gentleman says, it's Dennis, he says, considering the run starts at 9 a.m., I'm planning to eat a banana or a light sandwich at 6.30. Any other recommendations? Well. I don't eat bread and I don't think you should eat bread, but that's a whole other big topic. What I would be having, and this is probably one of the biggest questions I get asked, like if you wake up in the morning, you don't wanna have a big breakfast, you're gonna go out and run and it's just gonna sit there. So what's the easiest thing? My go-to things are things like, Dennis uses here, he uses a banana. I don't mind having some nuts, some almonds or something like that. Maybe a couple of dates, and then also I'll always love to have a coffee first thing in the morning. I just feel that's super easy to digest. Today I did a hard bike session, about 30 minutes before I did that bike session, ate a banana, and I can go all in on my bike session, heart rate's exploding, and I never feel like that banana is just, just about to come out. So you should have maybe figured this out before, but you've still got a few days. So my advice here, if you don't know what your food is pre-race, Smith Street Paleo Ball, that is an awesome idea, Rich. Shameless plug, I should give more plugs to this branding behind me, shouldn't I? Smith Street Paleo Ball actually combines those two. It combines the dates and the nuts together, so you get double whammy. They're available here at the gym, you can order them Smith Street online. That's the plug over. But what you've got tomorrow as well on Wednesday, I suggest you go out for a run. If you're going out for a run and it's gonna be early morning, put a little bit of that in. Decide if you're gonna eat banana, decide if you're gonna eat some nuts or a date, and actually take that in and then go and do the run. For some people, don't stress, you just might not be ready for that food at that time of day. And if you've done all of your training runs with no food, and then you trial food and it doesn't work, then just do the race without food. As I said in the marathon yesterday and the day before, you're gonna need, especially in the marathon, a little bit less in the 10K, but it's still gonna be prevalent, is that you're gonna need to start eating maybe a little bit before you think. I had a client who started feeling hungry about 20, 25K, so what we'll do with that client is we'll start to fuel him at the 15K mark. So you're gonna have to take some of that stuff with you. But if you have a big dinner the night before, and I'm gonna speak about that on Thursday, Carlin, you've joined. You're supposed to be at work in the middle of the desert or doing something, I don't know. But you're running the race, first marathon for Carlin on Friday. Not sure what he eats, Carlin. What do you eat before you go out running? Let me know. And you just have to be comfortable with what you're eating. Big meal the night before. I'm gonna talk about that on Thursday to get you ready the night before. But generally, what you should be eating is what works well for you. There's no hard and fast rules. They are my go-to things that you could think about. There's another question that's come in here. Uh, I did my first 7K run yesterday and I'm now lost of what to do with the rest of the days that leading into the marathon and training. Any tips? Shall I rest today and do a light jog on Wednesday, rest on Thursday and race on Friday? If you're trying, Carlin has his pancakes packed. That's a cool idea as well. It's actually super fun, this live stuff, when you guys interact with me and then I can talk back to you. But don't be shy. Um, the question here is, I did my first 7K yesterday. Should I rest today? It sounds like you're trying to cram a lot of training into the last week. 
I, for my athletes, I have them resting today, they have a light run tomorrow, then they rest on Thursday. You cannot pack a load of training in in this last week. It's the months before, the weeks before. We've had people on training plans for about three months for the marathon. Some people have been on training plans for a little bit longer because they've been dialing into different races. But this week, you don't need to overdo it. You don't need to be at the start line and just feeling completely depleted and just having absolutely no energy at all. So if you haven't done a lot of training just be comfortable that you haven't done a lot of training thanks a lot amazing show appreciate that just be comfortable that you haven't done a lot of training and you're just going to go out there and you're just going to do your best by making yourself fatigued and exhausted this week it's not going to help you to have a nice experience on race day race day is tough you're going to have to push to a level that you've probably not pushed to before that's why it's race day the crowds are going to be there cheers to you Gaith best of luck to Gaith in the 70.3 that's coming the following weekend he'll support you guys this weekend make sure so you support him next weekend in the 70.3 here in Dubai. What I was saying is don't go into the race fatigued. That's the worst thing. Waking up on Friday morning, you want to be just feeling like, yes, this is it. And the only way you do that is by going through this tapering period and just relaxing. So that's it for today's show, folks. My main takeaways there are make sure you've tested your nutrition. If you haven't, you still have a day or two to test it. If you don't like any nutrition before you run, that's cool. Just make sure you have some in your pockets so that you can have it along the way. Today's a rest day for most of my athletes. Make sure you do the mobility that I've been putting out on YouTube. If you don't have the link to that, just drop me a message, put it in the comments, and I will give it to you. Someone's just asked a question here. Can I squeeze in a light gym workout with weights today despite marathon last Friday and marathon this Friday? If it's going to make you feel better mentally, yes. Um, I wouldn't be looking to do anything super strenuous today. You're still fatigued from last Friday. For, to get over a marathon can take actually a couple of weeks for the skeletal damage, the damage on your skeleton, your muscles, your body. So I'd be taking it a bit easy. I would go to the gym, be in that environment, do some mobility, give everyone a high five, and then just get out of the way. I don't think you're going to get much stronger or you're not really going to get any stronger. So if it's lightweight, then you can do it. Carlin says, good luck to everyone. What about those who don't work out? I'm not sure. Uh, if you don't work out, just go and run the marathon and see what happens. There's plenty of people that have gone into a marathon or a 10K that don't work out. So Carlin says, good luck to everyone. I'm super excited to see him race on Friday. Also alongside his good friend, James Pikeaway, who I've been coaching. These guys are gonna do a great job. That's it for today, folks. Again, apologies about yesterday's show. You haven't missed out on anything. I've pretty much put everything I spoke about into today's show as well. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I'm going to be giving you Wednesday's show live from my bike training. I'm not sure how the sound quality is going to be. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's not too windy. I have about 10 hours to ride on my bike tomorrow, so I'm going to make sure that I put that video out for you when I have one of my breaks. And then I'm going to be back on Thursday with the last one. Thanks a lot for all of your support, guys. I hope these videos are useful and I hope you guys are ready. If you do have any questions that I'm not answering, please flick them over to me and I will answer them in the two days left leading in to the marathon on Friday. We'll miss you in Espresso Point Cafe. Yeah, <laughs> I'll miss you as well. I was just down there earlier. What is your YouTube channel? Good question, MJD Smith. Or you can check out my website, mjdsmith.com. The videos are on there, but go to MJD Smith or send me a direct message here on Instagram and I will send you the link directly to you so that you can go and check out that mobility video. Again, thanks a lot guys for tuning in and I really hope this is useful. Looking forward to seeing you all run on Friday. Enjoy the next couple of days. It's a great time. Taper syndrome is absolutely awesome and you're all going to do just fine. Cheers now.